Here are three ways to improve your forehand in 10 minutes. Now, the first tip is to take the racket back with both hands. Here we have former number one in the world, Leighton Hewitt. Look at him take his racket back. Look where his non-hitting hand is. It's on the throat of the racket. When you take the racket back, you want to get your shoulders turned more than your hips. You can see that. His shoulders are like this, but his hips are here. So by turning with his non-hitting hand on the throat of the racket, he's creating tension in the body. And that coiling allows him to then uncoil later on in the stroke. So make sure that you take your racket back with both hands. Film yourself and be sure that you're making this move. Now, the next idea has to do with your non-hitting hand. I want you to look at his non-hitting hand as he's striking the ball. Notice how it's rising. Look at this. This is such a great view of it. Dominic Team does the exact same thing. Watch his non-hitting hand as he's striking the ball. Look how it's rising. It's going up. What I tell players is when you film yourself, stop the footage at contact, and it should look like you're waving to your opponent with your non-hitting hand. This facilitates hip turn. Remember, we just coiled. We just turned our body away from the target. Now we need to uncoil and release all of that energy. A lot of recreational players drop this non-hitting arm, which creates a counterweight and makes it nearly impossible for the hips and the body to turn. But when the non-hitting hand rises, it makes it very easy to rotate. And yes, a lot of players in the comment section say, well, that's just a natural result of turning the body. Well, sure, but if you're not turning the body, then raising the non-hitting hand isn't natural. So we can actually force the body to rotate by raising the non-hitting hand as you're striking the ball. So just feel like as you're hitting the ball, you are waving to the opponent with your non-hitting hand. Here's another view of that exact idea. Look at his non-hitting hand rising as he's hitting the ball. We stop the video at contact. I mean, that basically looks like he's waving to his opponent at contact. Film yourself. Look at the footage at contact. Where is your non-hitting hand? Just like Novak Djokovic, I would recommend that your non-hitting hand at contact is at head level. Now, the last tip is what I call high, low, higher. This is a Vic Braden concept, but I added the higher at the end. There's his racket in the take back. Remember, he took the racket back with both hands and the racket is up when he took it back. Now he drops the racket down and the low of the high, low, higher, the low is actually prior to contact. So the racket should drop down below contact height. That way it can go up to contact. So watch, he's raising the racket up and I want you to look where his racket ends up. The racket ends up high. So let me draw this all again. So his racket is high. Then his racket is low and he's dropping down below contact because he wants to get topspin. So there's the low. And then here's higher. The idea is that think of going up higher on the follow through than you did the take back. If that's the way you think, you'll make sure that when you drop, you don't pull across, but when you drop, you go up. That's what's going to put the necessary topspin on the ball for increased control. Now to help me practice these three tips, I've got the Topspin Pro here. To get your own, you know what to do. Grab my affiliate link in the description below. I'll also pin it in the first comment. It would mean the world to me when you get a Topspin Pro that you use my link for at-home practice. So thank you so much. Tip number one, take the racket back with both hands. It's important that we turn our shoulders more than our hips. That creates tension in the body and we can uncoil and release that energy into the shot. An easy way to practice this, rather than just thinking, oh, both hands on the racket, actually release your hitting hand and just practice what it feels like to take the racket back with only the hand on the throat of the racket, turning the back of your front shoulder to your opponent. Again, that gets our shoulders to turn more than our hips. If you're a coach, that's an easy way to teach your students the proper take back. Have them just take the racket back with their other hand. Then when they turn, it'll be super easy to keep both hands on the racket. Tip number two, because we've coiled, now we need to uncoil. And an easy way to make sure you uncoil is at contact, if you film yourself and look at the, the video and stop the video at contact, at contact, it should look like you're waving to your opponent. So we turn with both hands, 
Then we uncoil, and when you uncoil correctly, your non-hitting hand is here. Now, there are different variations. Some players have it a little tucked in. Some players have it here. Some players have it here. Some players have it here. I like kind of right in the middle. The nice, obvious, like, looks like you're waving to your opponent. You'll see that my hand is at head level. We just saw Leighton Hewitt do that. I've made videos about Novak Djokovic doing the same thing, how the non-hitting hand is at head level, looking like he is waving. If your non-hitting hand drops, it's most likely becoming a counterweight and it makes it harder to turn your hips. You'll also see people hugging themselves when they do that. So take the racket back with both hands, tip number one. Tip number two, make it look like you are waving to your opponent at the moment you contact the ball. And tip number three is high, low, higher. Now I'm in my basement because it's raining outside right now. I was actually driving over to the courts to make this video and as I'm driving, it starts pouring down raining. I feel like the last month and a half has done nothing but rain uh, like every single day. It's really frustrating. But otherwise I'd be on the court or in my driveway right now filming. And, but with the ceiling here, I can't demonstrate the high, low, higher. So I'm just gonna go high, low, high. Higher would mean I would put a hole in the ceiling and that wouldn't be good. So I'm gonna turn high at contact or just before contact, I drop low and then I go up to contact to spin the ball, waving to the opponent. And then I'm gonna go up. Now I wanna make sure I don't hit the ceiling and then I'm gonna catch the racket in my non-hitting hand. So let me demonstrate some balls here. Turn with both hands, wave to the opponent and finish high, high, low, high. Or high, low, higher, right? I've had people comment and say, but Ryan, you're not like lagging or you're not pointing the buck cap at the ball. It's because I'm not swinging super fast. When you're practicing things and you go a little slower, some natural movements that you'll do when you swing faster won't happen. And that's okay. We're just going through the motions. Very simple. When the pros shadow swing their forehands or backhands, you'll see pros in between points and they'll just kind of shadow swing. They're not swinging at their absolute fastest. Nadal, when he shadow swings a forehand, he doesn't swing at the speed he actually swings when he's you know, in the middle of a match at, at Roland Garros. It's okay if your shadow swings are a little slower than your actual match speed, that's fine. So I turn, I wave to the opponent, and I finish high. Last one. Now, if you're looking for new people in your local area to play against, practice with, or if you're looking for a coach who can help you take your forehand to the next level, then use my link in the description. I'll also pin it in the first comment, playyourcourt.com slash two minute tennis. And when you use my link, you get 50% off when you join. Film yourself hitting forehands. See if you're making all three of these moves. Both hands on the way back, waving to the opponent at contact, and going high, low, high, and you catch the racket as a nice added bonus. That's tip number four, <laughs> to really increase the consistency. You make sure you're using these three techniques and there's no doubt you're gonna gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.